Which of the following is the most sensitive finding in cauda equina syndrome? All right, so this question is relatively straightforward. It is a question that addresses history and physical findings. And we have to know a little something about cauda equina syndrome. But this question is a classic. We need to find the most sensitive finding. And that's the key here. That's the important part of this question. So let's go through the answer choices. Answer choice A is back pain. Well, cauda equina syndrome may or may not present with back pain. And anytime, you know, when you think about that, that the condition can actually present without back pain, then it's unlikely to be the most sensitive finding, right? You could get cauda equina syndrome from trauma, but you could also get it from a tumor. You could get it from spinal epidural abscess, herniated disc. So not all of these are associated with back pain. So I'm going to cross off answer choice A as the most sensitive finding. Now let's go to answer choice B, saddle anesthesia. So this is one of those buzzwords that are associated with cauda equina syndrome. We got to be careful here though, because while it's a buzzword, the question is focused on the most sensitive finding. So saddle anesthesia certainly may occur with cauda equina, but it is usually one of the later findings. So if it's a late finding, then it's not going to be a highly sensitive finding. So let's cross off saddle anesthesia. Answer C, urinary incontinence. And then let's go to answer choice D as well, urinary retention. So these are, are pretty similar in that they both have to do with the bladder. <laughs> So let's start with urinary incontinence. Well, urinary incontinence actually is a late finding in cauda equina syndrome. And let's, let's walk through this. So if we look at answer choice D, urinary retention, we know that cauda equina syndrome is associated with the inability to urinate. And so that will lead to urinary retention. You can't contract your bladder in order to urinate. Now, when urinary retention is when it's progressive, what happens? You get overflow incontinence. So that's where the urinary incontinence comes from. So urinary retention is the first thing that happens and when we're dealing with the bladder, and it happens to be the most sensitive finding. So I'm going to cross off answer choice C, urinary incontinence here, in favor of answer choice D, urinary retention. And the classic presentation here is you take an IV drug user who comes in not looking so great and states that he or she can't go to the bathroom, and you do a post-void residual, you have them urinate, and what you find is you have you know, at least 200 cc's of urine still in the bladder, and that will confirm urinary retention. It's a pretty classic finding with a cauda equina syndrome, and if that progresses, right, if urinary retention progresses, what that leads to is urinary incontinence, overflow incontinence. So these patients all need MRIs if the suspicion is high for cauda equina syndrome. So answer choice D, urinary retention is what I'll go with here. And sure enough, that is the correct answer. Hey everyone, before you go, if you're interested in your own QBank, whether you are an MD or DO, a PA, or an MP, simply go to roshreview.com and sign up for a free trial. See if Rosh Review's content is right for you. Keep learning, keep working hard, and always have a sense of mission about your work. Now is your time. This is Dr. Adam Rosh, signing off.